Hey, this is Rubber Cheese. I'm gonna do a mini review of my Lenovo P16S Gen 2 after using it for about a month. This model has the 400 nit OLED display um, and I've got the full model number listed uh, below. Other reviewers go really in depth on technical aspects. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about usability while comparing it to some other laptops. You can jump around without watching the whole review using the links below. I'll include a link to a P16S laptop in the comments below. I'll find one as close to this one as I can find. This may be an affiliate link. If so, I may get commission if you make a purchase through the link. So I'm gonna start off with the two main reasons I bought this laptop, the screen and also the keyboard. Afterwards, I'll touch on each physical and usability aspect of this laptop. So, this model has a 16 by 10 OLED display, and uh, there, there, is, there are IPS screens available on the P16S's, but this is the OLED display, and it's got a really good anti-reflective coating. This display is beautiful. Um, the anti-alert reflective coating works really well, um, even when there's high light. Um, I'm just going to show with a uh, flashlight. It is really effective. I mean, obviously you can see there's glare, but it's very effective at minimizing that. Um, and the coating does a good job without noticeably affecting the brightness of the display. OLEDs ha are kind of known for being not as bright, but this is very bright. In fact, I usually use it um, at a reduced brightness setting. Right now I've got it up. Oh, I don't. This is at full. Um, this is probably the nicest display I've used on any laptop or even computer. And I really find that the 16 by 10 ratio is, is really nice for productivity. Of course, the problem with that is if you're watching 1080p or 4K movies, um, such as this one, you end up with the black bars at the top and the bottom. Um, but the 16 by 10 is really nice for productivity. Um, as far as the keyboard goes, um, this is a really great layout. I like that the arrow keys have a little bump out and like kind of hang below the keypad. And I like these extra buttons above the numpad. It's the equal, the brackets, backspace, and then there's the um, calculator button if you use the function. So that's a pretty cool shortcut to have. Um, the keyboard has backlights. Um, it's got three different settings. And I'm just going to shut off the lights just to give an idea of how that looks. And this is about as dark as I can get it. And so with no keyboard light, and then this is the brightest. And so looking straight on, it lights up the actual keys. In reality, you're typically looking at a bit of an angle and you see more the light around the keys. It's not being captured too well in the video, um, but it, it's actually really good at, at showing where one key ends and the next begins. This keyboard is really nice to type on, but even after a month, I still don't love the bias to the left, and that's caused by this numpad over here. Similarly, I don't really like that the trackpad is biased to the left, um, it's done so that it's centered right below the keyboard, which is nice because it means when you're typing, you're not accidentally tapping the uh, trackpad. Um, so working on a desk, I find this layout to be just fine. But when I'm using it on my lap, especially if I'm laying down, I find that this shifted um, layout is kind of annoying. Before I got this laptop, I couldn't really understand why people were getting large laptops without the numpad. But now I really do understand if you're working on your lap, I, I would much prefer not to have a numpad and to have everything just centered. Um, so as I showed, the dual um, brightness keyboard is really nice and it can just be shut off easily when it's not needed. Before I bought this, I tried a lot of other key laptop keyboards in store and none of them came close to the ThinkPad. Um, even the lower end Lenovo's just don't have the same. So I've got a couple of other laptops with me. This one's a lower end Asus. 
Um, this keyboard actually is sort of textured. I don't really like that. It just doesn't feel right. And the feel of it is just not right. Um, I've also got an old Lenovo IdeaPad. I'm pretty sure that the IdeaPads still have these same keyboards. They're, they're really, they are really good, but they're not as good. So, um, there's also this red eraser tip pointer. It's good in certain positions and it's, it's nice because it doesn't really impact the use of the keyboard, even though it's right in the middle of the keyboard. Um, and then obviously there's dedicated actual physical buttons here. Um, but you can also obviously just press the bottom of the keyboard keypad, or you can just tap it as well. So there's a bunch of options here, um, but I do appreciate having physical buttons. So stepping back a little bit, the traditional ThinkPad business style looks good, but it is bulkier than other laptops, measuring approximately 14 and a quarter inches wide um, by 10 inches by about 0 0.81 inches deep. Um, for overall weight, I will just throw it on a scale right now. It's, whoops, 1864 grams. Oops, I'm not sure why I pressed tear. It's rated at 3.76 pounds. Um, but my scale is showing it actually weighs a little bit over 4 pounds. Um, and just for comparison, I'm just going to compare or put up the a 14 inch. So this is a T14. Just line them up. So that's roughly the physical size difference between a 14 inch laptop. Um, this is a T14, this is a P16S. All the research I've done shows that it's really the same chassis. If you were to get a T16, it'd be the same chassis as a P16S. So this is a pretty fair uh, way to compare sizes. And then I've also, my normal day-to-day -day use, um, up until I got this one, was this guy here. This is a 13.3 inch. This is a Lenovo L13. Now, the reason I have so many laptops is this here one is my work laptop. This is a laptop I used to have, and then obviously this is the new one. Um, I do have a bias to ThinkPad, specifically because I love these keyboards. So that's sort of how they all look. So this lid is constructed from a polycarbonate reinforced with graphite and carbon fiber. There's also a gray model that has an all aluminum lid. The base is what they call PPS, which seems to be from, from what I've read, a strong and rigid heat resistant plastic. Um, PPS stands for polyphenylene sulfide. Um, but thanks to all these materials, there is no chassis flex when the laptop is picked up by a corner. So even if we have it open, we can lift it by a corner and there's no flexing. All right, so looking around it, we've got a gigabit uh, ethernet port. There's two USB ports. Now, on the side, there's a little indicator that you use this one to charge. Um, but in reality, you can actually charge using either this one or you can charge with this guy. And we got an HDMI and then this is an always on USB. Um, now the always on, it's always on if the laptop is plugged in. Just going to demonstrate how that kind of works. Oh, of course I have it turned on right now, so I can't, but basically, um, if the lap, even if the laptop's off, this will be powered when you got it plugged in. As soon as it's not plugged in, uh, it'll power down. Going to the other side, we've got a large exhaust vent and uh, USB Type A, and then we got the security port. Um, all of these USB ports are USB 2.3. 
except for this one is a USB 4. Open it back up again. Now it does depend on which exact configuration you have, but the power button incorporates a fingerprint reader. And this is the 86 kilowatt hour battery. It's really good. Um, with this specific configuration that I've got, um, I get six to seven hours of battery life. Um, for my use, roughly half of that is just desktop stuff like browsing spreadsheets. And then roughly half of it is playing games. However, those games are being streamed through st Steam. So the processing is not really being done on the laptop. It's really just acting as an input and also output. But yeah, I'm getting more than six hours of battery life, but usually a little bit less than seven. So above the display is the uh, camera and this has the physical block over the camera. And then if we go to the bottom, there's not a whole lot to see um, aside from all the vents. And then of course you got your serial number and stuff down here. So also included is a charger. This is a really small charger, but it is just a USB-C. So you can just use existing chargers um, and just have this one as a spare if you've already got. Uh, this is rated at 65 watts. So when I was reviewing or when I was researching this before I bought it, one of the complaints was the amount of time it takes to uh, power up. So I'm going to do that for you um, just a minute so you can get an actual view of how long it takes to power up. So I've got it shut off and I'm going to turn it on and also hit the timer at the same time. So I do find that this does uh, start up slower than other laptops I use, but it's fast enough that it's fine for me. Um, my main laptop or the laptop I've been using before starts up so quickly that once it gets to the desktop, I still have to wait for the Wi-Fi to connect. Um, whereas at least this one kind of does it almost while it's loading. So to get to the login screen is just under 30 seconds. We're about 27. Um, once I log in, it's, it's basically instant. So one other thing I mentioned before is that I was finding that the T series and the PS series were really the same. So again, this is my T14, my work laptop, and this is the P60NS that I'm talking about right now. It's really interesting. I thought all of the ports are exactly the same. Oh, and I'm sorry, this T14 is also a Gen 2. So all of the ports are the same. And the keyboard is really the same layout as well. So if you're looking for one of these laptops, I would consider both the T-Series and the PS-Series. For the most part, while I was looking, the P16S was cheaper, but there was a period in time that I was monitoring pricing where the T16s were cheaper for basically identical hardware. And as you can see, the actual body really is the same. Um, yeah. So, I mean, overall, this P16S is an excellent productivity laptop. The display is great for media consumption, as long as you're okay with having the bars on the top and the bottom because of the 16 by 10 ratio. The premium price is, in my opinion, more than made up for by the excellent build quality, including what I consider to be the absolute best keyboard, and at least if you buy the OLED model, one of the best displays available on a laptop. If you've got one of these, um, please leave your feedback in the comments. And similarly, if you found something that you like better, let me know what it is. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please leave a, leave a like or subscribe. Um, below, I've got the full model number of this specific model. And like I say, I'm going to link to one, to hopefully this model, or at least as close to this model as possible. Um, it may be an affiliate link. And like I mentioned before, if it is, I may get credit if you buy through it. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, 
best of luck in your laptop search.